Hello and welcome to lesson number 8.3. We will talk about Rust analysis in this time. So for Rust analysis, I've already um, opened up and loaded the SRTM data set that comes along with the QGIS and exercise data. And uh, we will start off with an analysis and it's called Hillshade, which, which gives us a quite good 3D interpretation of the SRTM data set here in this case. So we will go to the processing toolbar and say, well, um, hill shade. There it is. It is under rust terrain analysis. We will use a Z factor of one because we will not over exaggerate the, the terrain. Um, the azimuth means from which direction facing north the the artificial or technical sun should shine, right? And we will take the vertical angle of 40 degrees and let's save the result to a permanent file named hill shade or I like the TIFF format it might not be the um, yeah the best in case of memory consumption or whatsoever but it's quite common in the GIS world so it is a safe bet so go and run close this what can we see now well the hill shade and this gives us somehow some plastic overview of the terrain but let me show you one example where it really brings us further so we'll go with the SRTM and we'll use single blend pseudo color let's go with the yeah, why not let's go with the radius And uh, now we have a color scheme that is quite diverse, but once we putting the hill shade on top of it with um, a different transparency, we get quite a good idea about the topography and what is looking into what direction. By saying so, the direction of a slope is always of importance in terms of weathering so if you have erosion um, problems in your area it's always good to have an idea okay what what direction which which um, orientation has a slope so is it facing north south and so on so therefore we will use the aspect function in the rest of terrain analysis please make sure to check the srtm so the height data as an input we will store it as an different file called aspect.tiff click on save save replace if you have it done already once again select the aspect tool click on run and there we are now we are now we see all the slopes facing into different directions starting with zero degrees so facing north up to 360 degrees facing north again but the aspect is not the only or the other um, raster terrain analysis step we will take today we will also have a look on the slope why is slope so important of course if you're in geomorphology then slopes that are have values above a certain threshold are quite quite an issue so we will take care of the slopes today and have a look at them once again we will select the srtm as an input we will save it to a local file called slope dot tiff click on run close this again now we can see that there are slopes that are at a certain degree with 83 degrees um but let's have a look on the symbology and use a minimum maximum stretch of two percent apply now it looks much better so there are slopes that are that are quite steep here with 40 degrees 24 degrees and so on but um this is already one step beyond just looking at an srtm right so now we have an idea about the slopes we have an idea about the aspect of an of um a slope and we can create stunning 3d images already 
using the hill shade and the underlying SRTM data. As said, the aspect gives us all the directional information we need, but what about identifying only northern facing slopes? So we will work with the raster calculator. Therefore, go to raster calculator. First of all, we will take care of the aspect. And we will say, well, if it is less than 90, or aspect 1 is bigger than 270, we can say, well, it's facing north, right? So, therefore, we'll define an output. We'll name it north. Save. Yes, I would like to replace this. It is as a geotiff, and we will take the output CRS here that comes with the STM data itself. Just press OK. And now we can see all the north facing slopes. We will do the same analysis or a similar analysis with the slope layer. Therefore, we will go to raster calculator and say slope or less equals 5. We will name it as slope underscore 5 dot tiff. Geotiff once more. Okay. And another one giving us an interpretation of slope slopes less equals 2. As said, if you are working in, in urban development or something like that, that is an important factor because it will um, lead to minimized cursor if you would like to build something on a less inclined slope. So go with this. So this, now we have slope 2, slope 5, north facing slopes and um, also the aspect and so on. Now we have binary rasters and we can use this information on a much better way than to have that really deep information on all the uh, aspect values and all the slope values because now we can multiply it maybe and we can add or summarize those three rasters to a combined raster and analyze this one. So we have all the information we need in one raster file. And for urban development, as said, we might have some criteria, right? So it should be north facing. North facing is not so bad in South Africa because it will minimize some of the input of the sun to, to a certain degree. And north facing slopes can be, should be less than 5%. And if it's a flat area, like maximum of 2% in the slope, we should be fine with this as well. So let's have a look on where those areas are. Therefore, we will use a formula. We'll use aspect north. My layer sounds different, of course. My layer has a name north. And slope, slope 5, is it, should be 1. Or slope 2 could be one as well, right? And if this is met, or this is met, we will get a one. If it's not met, it will be a zero. So we will combine all the uh, suitable areas, we will name it, right? And we will name it raw. We will come to this later on. Name it with TIFF. Click on save. We'll go with the PSG that is mentioned here. And click on Okay, so the suitable areas raw is now placed here. Let's have a look here. So these are the suitable areas. We have zeros and ones, but now, okay, we have a cell size of about 30, uh, 90 meters times 90 meters. And due to the fact that we would like to have um, connected areas, so a single spot, like a single cell might not be relevant to us, right? Because we need some more space for our development program. We will use a sieve function in the rest analysis. We will take care of the suitable areas raw and we will take an, a place into account if there are eight connected pixels, right? We will use validity mask, not, we will not use it to save, save to temporary file, that is good already so save it to a file 
The last one was named suitable areas raw. We will now name this as suitable areas. And just press run. Once again, it's placed somewhere different. Let's move this to the top. Well, this looks a little bit odd, right? So there should be more places where there are suitable areas. And do you remember why? Take a look at the last lesson. We were talking about data and representation of data. So now let's have a look into this information. This is a float32 number. And to be quite honest, it should be just zeros and ones, right? So, but the minimum value is here minus. 20 mil, 1 million or even more so the, pre, the, the representation is just wrong therefore we will use the raster calculator once more and we will now filter out the suitable areas if the value is less than zero or less equal to zero it should be zero We'll save it once again. Suitable areas filtered. Press on OK. Now this looks now even better. So we have all the non suitable areas in black, and the white represents the suitable areas. We have a value of one over there. Let's have a look with the identify features tool again. As you can see, one zero great now we have reclassified the suitable areas layer but what about if you would like to reclassify more data more pixels to new values there's another tool inside the processing uh, toolbox that is called reclassify by table so that does not mean or that means that you do not have to enter command line parameters but you can only uh, but you can work with an input layer here, let's go with the aspect. We would like to make a four pattern aspect file that says, okay, either you're facing north, east, south, or west. So we will go with the band one. There will be a reclassification table. Let's open this up. Let's add some rows here and we will go from zero to 45. This is value one from 315 to 360 should be one as well. Then we have 45, no, come on, 45 till 135 should be 2, 135 to 215 should be 3, 225, right? And we need another row, 225 till 350 that should be four just press on okay we will use this range boundaries minimum value uh, less equals maximum value and the output data type well if you would like to sh if you would like to store information always make sure okay what pixel value should i expect we have now decided well regardless of what is coming in we are covering the whole range of data from zero to 360 regardless of what's coming in whether you float, integer, or whatsoever, we will either say 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Cool. So, do we need a float data type in the output? Of course not. We can go with integers, and um, by saying so, we can use a really small number of integers. So, we will go with int 16. Now we can go on signed int 16. So, we will store it as a reclassified image. Once again, our aspect classified. .tiff. Great. And that's it for the moment. It will take this Rust layer as a reference layer, so it will extract all the information that is needed, like pixel and then the CRS and so on. So we will click on run. Let's close this. Now this looks odd. But why is it so? Because of the representation again. So we have the maximum 
of 55,000. This is not usable at all. So let's have a look here on the stretch to min max, or oh, let's override it by hand. One and four. So these are now the four values. So we can also check with the identify tool. We have four, one, three. You know, you might remember the histogram function. Once again, we can calculate the histogram if it's not there already. Seems like it is there already. And those 55,000, what are those values, right? So there are quite a few of them. Let's have a look. I suppose. Yeah. This is the, the bounding rectangle value. So we can once again go here. Go to the symbology or the transparency and define a transparent or define a no data value, which is 55,000. 55,537. So go to transparency, add this, say OK. And now we will uncheck the visibility of all those other layers. And now you will see that this is totally transparent. Let's add some OSM registers to it. So this is the burden of, of missing data. <clears throat> and so we have a value of 55,000, which is totally nonsense. But now we have a proper aligned raster. We have four different values representing the four different um, faces. So in the last minute, I was using the identifier results tool quite often. So I just pressed somewhere and I get this nice tree view here. Um, by saying so, what is it? We have three different features here, hill shade, aspect and slope. These are all checked here in my layer tree. And you can also say, well, I don't want to have that tree view. I would like to go with the table. Right, so you click somewhere and get all the information that you need, or you can even switch to graph if that is suitable for your analysis. But um, there's a, another cool plugin out there where you can work with. Uh, but before I can, I will show you this. Also, make sure that you will work with mode. So sometimes it's uh, set to the current layer, so you will just query hill shade layer here. If I go with uh, okay, identify results. I will only get the hill shade layer. You can go with top down, stop at first. Once again, this will be slope here because this are the three layers enabled. And you can also switch to top down. So this will give you the results for all the three layers that are around. There's another cool plugin you can install. It is called Value T Tool or Value Tool from Jorge Almerio which is, uh, who is the maintainer. Let's open this up, the value T tool panel. So you can enable and disable it, and it works already on, without clicking. And so you can design which layers you would like to have, all the visible layers, all layers, or only the selected layers, show all the bands or just the active bands, and there is a table view already embedded here. As, com or as or quite similar to the one you see on the right side here. So we go here to table, then I can click somewhere and I'll get the same idea uh, on values that I have in the, in the value tool. But the value tool is already updated all the time without even, yeah, without even clicking and you can design the decimals. This is, quite a good tool to get a nice and easy insight into the data because you can compare the values even better instead of clicking all the time that's it sorry for the long ride i hope you enjoyed it still and if you have any question or remarks comments whatsoever please drop me a line i'll answer them right away otherwise subscribe take care and goodbye